Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be teaching Form 4 Chapter 13, which is urinary system and the formation of urine. So I believe that a lot of students, they don't understand this subtopic because uh, I've received a lot of um, message and also the comment that you guys want me to do formation of urine. So here am I. So I'll be doing formation of urine. It's not a process that is very hard to understand. As you watch this video, if you finish watching this video, you will notice that actually it's very easy. Okay, so let's get started then. Now, first of all, as I always mentioned since the beginning of the video, like no, from the first, first, first ever video that I always say that when you learn biology, you need to learn the labeling first. If you don't know labeling, actually you don't even know anything in biology. So let's start from labeling first. So first of all, let's look at this thing. We call this as nephron. Every kidney, we have millions of nephrons. So this entire thing here, we call this as nephrons. We have to learn the label part. So can you see that there is red color and blue color thing? The red color and blue color is actually our blood vessel. So we all know that red color usually representing artery. The blue color usually rep representing vein, right? So we call this as venal artery and venal vein. All artery transport oxygenated blood. All vein transport deoxygenated blood besides the pulmonary vein, right? For vein, okay? And also all artery transport oxygenated blood besides pulmonary artery, right? So this one is the basic artery thing. So this artery here, transport what? Transport oxygenated blood. If vein away, they transport what? They transport deoxygenated blood. So this is the artery and vein. Nothing special here, just the artery and vein. So you will notice that they are surrounded with the yellow color thing, which is the nephrons. This is the entire thing. Why do they need to be surrounded with the, the kidney tubule? Later, we will learn why they are surrounded with the kidney tubule, okay? Now, let's look at the first part first. Okay, you have to write number one, two, three, four, five. Number one, we start with from glomerulus. So what is glomerulus? Glomerulus is a bunch of capillaries, which is the bunch of arteries, as you can see from here, is a bunch of arteries. This artery has a beginning and the end. So we will learn what is the beginning, what is the end later. There is two different endings, we call this as glomerulus. So it's a bunch of capillary, like a bunch of blood vessels. So this bunch of blood vessels, they are in a capsule. This capsule called Bowman's capsule, okay, right number two over here. Bowman's capsule. So remember to capital B, we call this as a Bowman's capsule. So along the Bowman's capsule, you will reach a place called proximal convoluted tubule. This is number three, or we can call this as PCT proximal convoluted tubule. And you move down, we have a place called loop of Henle. Number four, loop of Henle. The fifth one is distal convoluted tubule, DCT. So what is the difference between proximal and distal? If you learn it in Form 4, Chapter 1, proximal, it means the top part. Distal, it means the most ending part. So you have to know the meaning of biology in order to make your life easier, guys. Okay, You have to know the meaning. So that in the rest of the biology, then you will know that, oh, actually distal, it means the same thing. Proximal, it means the same thing. So you have to know the meaning in order to make your biology learning life easier, okay? So proximal, it means the top part. Distal, it means the ending part. If you guys cannot remember, it's okay, guys. Imagine this thing. This thing, if you move downwards, okay, if you pull it down, is this the top part? Yes, right. If you move this thing downwards, is this the down part? Of course. So proximal is the top part. Distal is the bottom part. So proximal, distal. And then we will have the last part called collecting duct. Okay, this is the last part called collecting duct. So remember, the first one, we start from this bunch of blood capillaries. They are in the Bowman's capsule. Capsule is a thing I saw. Capsule is a, is a, is a capsule. Like in English, it's a capsule, okay? So it's a C-shaped thing, and they, were, they are inside. So this Bowman's capsule, if you continue, we have PCT. We have loop of Henle. This is capital H because it's a Katanamaha. So it's loop of Henle. If you move up, we have DCT, distal convoluted tubule, and then the last part is collecting duct. So you have to know the label part, okay? So if you don't remember, it's okay. You can pause this video for maybe one or two minutes to remember the part first, okay? If you have done, we're going to continue with the process. Formation of urine has three process. The first process is known as uh, ultra filtration, okay? I've highlighted in different, the green color one, we call this as ultra filtration. The second process is called reabsorption. The last process is called secretion. So let's start from the meaning of what is ultra filtration. Ultra means that they only filter certain things. Usually they will only allow small things to pass through, the large thing cannot pass through, okay? Filtration, it means filter. Lah. So they will filter the large thing they cannot pass through and the small thing can, uh, can diffuse across. We call this as ultra filtration, the first process. Second process, we call this as reabsorption. So whenever we say reabsorption, reabsorption are the things that we want or we don't want. 
of course, are the things that we want. So reabsorption are the things that we want. Okay, if you want it, it means it goes to the blood capillary because it, it transports to all parts of the body, right? So reabsorption is a process that we want. Secretion are the things that we don't want, okay? Don't want. Secretion, things that we don't want, it will excrete out as a urine. So they will go to the kidney tubule. The yellow color thing, the entire yellow color thing here, okay? Hopefully that you guys are not colorblind, okay? So this yellow color thing here, okay? Or maybe pale peach color, la, whatever. La. So this is a kidney tubule. So things that we don't want, it will move along in this kidney tubule and it will go out as a urine. So secretion are the things that we don't want. Reabsorption are the things that we want. Ultra filtration are the things that we want to filter out. So the first process, just what we say, right? Number one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Who is number one? Number one is glomerulus, right? Glomerulus is in this thing called what? Bowman's capsule. So glomerulus, Bowman's capsule together is number one. Usually they put it as number one la, okay, because they are together as one, right? So number one. So we have a process called ultra filtration. How do they want to filter this thing? Just now I mentioned, right? Glomerulus has two endings. We have afferent arterial and efferent arterial. Arterial means smaller version of artery, la, it's called arterial. Efferent is the one that comes first. Efferent is the one that comes next. If you don't know, never mind, guys. If you know your A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, right? You know A comes first, right? So A is the one that comes first. So this, the one that comes first is bigger in size. Yeah, bigger in size. And efferent is the smaller one, the small one. Okay, the, the lumen, okay? The lumen is bigger and smaller. Because efferent arterial is the one that comes first, right? And then efferent is the second one, right? From a bigger lumen to a smaller lumen, there's a change in the pressure. Because from larger to smaller, the pressure will increase, right? If you do not also never mind, guys. Later, you go to your toilet, you play with the water, the, 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 the water pipe. Blah. Then you will know that if it's a, the, the hole is bigger, then the, the water will flow like that. If the hole is smaller, then it will have a higher pressure. If you don't know, you can practice. I mean, you can understand in your late, daily life because you can relate back to your daily life. So this is the pressure difference. When we have a pressure difference, we have a name for this. The name for this, we call this as hydrostatic pressure. If you guys remember, we learned this in lymphatic system. If you never remember what is the lymphatic system, it's okay. I have made a video about lymphatic system. You can watch the lymphatic system video. Because of this high hydrostatic pressure, they will force the fluid out. Okay, What are the things that they will force out? They will force out most of the fluid, but there are three things cannot diffuse in, into it. It's the same as your lymphatic system. What are the things that cannot diffuse into it? No red blood cell, no platelets, no plasma protein. Why? Because they are too large. Remember, don't write too big, you write too large. Okay, don't, don't write big in biology. We always refer as large. Large surface area, they are large, they are large molecules, so use large because they are too large to diffuse across. So there's no blood in our urine because blood cannot pass through. Right? I, mean, I mean, red blood cell cannot pass through. Right? So our urine will never be red in color. So because that's red blood cell cannot pass through. So this treating cannot pass through, so they will remain in the blood capillary. The rest, it will go into the kidney tubule. So when they enter to the kidney tubule, they will enter to a space called cavity of Bowman's capsule. What does cavity mean? Cavity, it means a space. The space of a Bowman's capsule called cavity of Bowman's capsule is a space. So the fluid right now is called glomerular filtrate. Why is it called glomerular filtrate? Just now we have mentioned, right, the bunch of blood capillary called what? Glomerulus. Glomerulus, right? Filtrate. What is a filtrate? Filtrate is the things that is being filtered out. It's called glomerular filtrate. Is it quite easy to understand? Right? Why is it called glomerular filtrate? Because they are filtered from the glomerulus. Called glomerular filtrate. Okay? So the left, the, the things in the glomerular filtrate, they have everything else. Besides red blood cell, platelets, and plasma protein because they are too large. So this entire process here is known as ultra filtration. And it's one of the common questions that you will see in your exam. So you have to know how to explain your ultra filtration. Okay? Next, we have reabsorption. What are reabsorption? We have mentioned are the things that we want. What are the things that we want? We only want five things. Water, NaCl, glucose, amino acid. There are only five things that we want in our bloodstream. Okay, glucose, NaCl, amino acid, uh, glucose, amino acid, NaCl, water. There are only five things. So first, it says, all glucose and amino acid are fully reabsorbed. All, all means what? Fully. In our urine, there will be no glucose and no amino acid. If your urine has glucose, the person will have diabetes mellitus. If the person urine contains of amino acid, it, it means that the person urine contains, I mean, has the person has kidney failure. So remember, if the person urine 
has glucose, it means that at PCT, they cannot be fully reabsorbed. Amino acid, it means what? Amino acid, it means that if the urine has amino acid, it means at PCT, the amino acid cannot be fully reabsorbed. So it will be a disease when these two things cannot be fully reabsorbed. They cannot be fully reabsorbed. It will be a thing. So it's a question that you will see in your exam also. So you have to make sure PCT, all glucose and amino acid should be fully reabsorbed at your, after PCT, your loop of Henle, your DCT, collecting that, there will be no glucose and amino acid. This is the point that you have to remember. After PCT, loop of Henle, DCT, collecting that, there will be no glucose amino acid. So sodium, it will be reabsorbed as active transport. Chlorine, it will be passive. Water, it will be osmosis. Do you need to know the percentage? Actually, you do need to know the percentage. The percentage is not important, but you have to know all glucose and amino acid are, are being fully reabsorbed. These are things that you have to know. Percentage, don't need to know. And you have to know Na is by active transport. This is something that you will see in your exam also. Next, we will go to loop of Henle. Loop of Henle also by reabsorption. They will also carry out reabsorption. Same thing, reabsorption are the things that we want. What do we want? NaCl, water, glucose, amino acid, right? But just now, glucose, amino acid are being fully reabsorbed. What do we lack? We only lack three things. NaCl, water, three things. NaCl, water, right? So, do you have to know what is ascending limb and descending limb? The answer is you don't need to know what is ascending limb and descending limb. You only need to know that NaCl, water, are being reabsorbed into the bloodstream again. So our blood, it needs to have a lot of NaCl, water. If there is no NaCl water, we cannot maintain electrolytes in the body. We cannot maintain the water balance in the body. So it's important for our body to have a lot of water and also NaCl. Lah. Okay, next we have DCT. DCT has two process, reabsorption and secretion. But what's so special about this DCT because they are reabsorption, it depends on the endocrine system. It means that it depends on your body. So when your body has more water uh, or maybe lesser water, uh, then it will produce different type of hormone for you to reabsorb different amount of NaCl water. If you want to reabsorb water, they will use antidiuretic hormone. This is in chapter 12. If you don't know, you can revise back to your chapter 12, ADH, okay? In short form, we call this as ADH. Antidiuretic hormone, they are from the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland, okay? And then aldosterone, they are from the adrenal gland. It's like a cap above the kidney, lah, the adrenal gland. So adrenal gland, they will secrete aldosterone. Pituitary gland, they will secrete ADH. ADH, they will reabsorb water. Aldosterone, they will reabsorb NaCl, which is from the adrenal gland, uh, NaCl. So as I mentioned, it depends on the amount of NaCl water in your body. It depends. All, all of the things depends on your body. Sometimes your body got more water. So you will reabsorb less water, long, so you breathe more. When your body has lesser water, then you will reabsorb more water. So it depends on your body situation. So it's very various in this part, okay? Next, secretion. We have mentioned secretion are the things that we don't want. What are the things that we don't want? We don't want drugs. We don't want alcohol. We don't want urea, ammonia, uric acid. So if you watch those, you know, those drama, then you will notice that the police go to a club. What do they want to check? They want to check the people who went to the club. Do they take drugs or not, right? So they will go, they will ask the people to go for a urine test. They are not testing the presence of alcohol, guys. You go to a club, you don't drink alcohol, you drink what? You drink milk, uh, guys. Of course, they test the presence of drugs because taking drugs in Malaysia is illegal. I mean, actually, in a lot of countries, they are also illegal uh, unless you are talking about your Amsterdam. Uh. Amsterdam taking marijuana is, can, I cannot say it's legal, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a gray zone. Uh. But in Malaysia, confirm cannot, right? So they will ask you to test for a uh, uh, urine test to see whether there is any drugs in your urine or not. But they don't test for alcohol. Lah. You just cannot drive when you drink alcohol. So that one is another test. It's not urine test, okay? If you want to see whether you drink and drive, then it will be another test. It's never a urine test. Lah. So drugs and alcohols are the things that we don't want in our body. So it will be removed out of the body. But drugs can remain in our body for more, more hours compared to alcohol. Alcohol probably about a day, then it will be gone. But for drugs, maybe it will remain in your body for two to three days. So if a person takes drugs at home on the first day and the third day he went to a club, he met the police, the police asked him to go for a urine test. Will the results still be positive? The chances are still yes because drugs can remain in the body for a very long time. Not like alcohol. Alcohol one day or maybe after you drink more water, you urine and the alcohol will be gone. So drugs is different. Huh? So urea are the things that we don't want also. Ammonia, urea acid are the things that we don't want also. So 
If we cannot remove all of these things out from the body, our body will have a lot of toxic, then we will die. Okay, maybe not so fast die first. You can go for hemodialysis, you can go for kidney transplant, only you will die. If you never did the two process that I mentioned just now, then the person will only die. So remember, secretion are things that we don't want. You have to remove out from the body so it will enter to the kidney tubule. Kidney tubule is the yellow color part, it's called kidney tubule. Things that we want, it will enter to the blood capillary. Things that we don't want, it will enter to the kidney tubule because kidney tubule, it will form as a urine. So the last one is collecting duct. Collecting duct can also carry out reabsorption. Just that in your new syllabus, I don't know why they removed that part, but they will also carry out reabsorption. They will also reabsorb any CR water. So it depends on the permeability, like it depends on your body also. Lor. So the all of these things, they will form a thing called urine. Urine contains of water, contains of urea, contains of NaCl, uric acid, creatinine, ammonia, things that we don't want. But urea, NaCl is the excess one. Okay, It doesn't mean that we will remove all of the water and NaCl from our body. Only the excess thing, it will be removed out. So urine, it will go down to the ureter because the collecting duct, they are connected to the ureter, the bladder, and then the urethra. Then it will be removed out. This is a very popular asked question in your exam, even for your ACA question. So you can copy this thing now if you want to because you're going to be useful for you, for you to, to, to do for your exam question. And it will be also one of the experiments, but it will never be a paper tree experiment because it's too, way too disgusting. This experiment is basically the, the teacher will ask a few students to drink water, drink different amount of water, maybe two hours before class. So two hours later, we will measure and you observe the urine of the person. So imagine your class got 40 students. Only like six students involved in this experiment. What happened to the 34 students? You observe your friend's urine. I know it's very disgusting. So that's why they don't do it right now anymore. And plus, it's paper tree is a practical one. You cannot do that. You cannot like collect your friend's urine right now. You do that. Uh, of course, it's, it's hygiene purpose. Lah. Last time, they actually do it in school. They, they find a few students, they drink different amount of urine, then they will know all oh, this amount of urine got what color. If you drink a lot of water, obviously your urine is lighter in color, right? And it's more and it's more in volume, right? If you drink lesser water, your urine will be lesser and it's more concentrated. So you have to observe your friend's urine. But right now, because it's MCO, I think your school teacher will only ask you to do it at home. Hopefully, your teacher will not ask you to step a photo and send it to your teacher lah, because your, your teacher phone will fool with <laughs> the student's urine. <laughs> Hopefully, no. But it's a thing that you have to do it at home lah, for you to observe. It's an activity that you have to do it. So this is the process of formation of urine. So hopefully it's not hard for you to understand because three process, six labeling, then you know what is the meaning of the process, what is the meaning of the name, it will be easy for you to score. Hopefully this video helped you to understand better for formation of urine. Any question, you can comment below or any subtopic that you want me to do, you can also comment below. Hopefully... The subtopic that I see I means uh, there are more people who work for subtopic, then I will do the subtopic. Okay, so see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.